So before beginning, if you like this kind of content, what should they do? Hit that bell for notifications. Subscribe. Check out my comic book. It's the kids of the It's so awesome. Go to our shop. Go to our shop, too? Oh, yeah. I forgot to bring that up. You can get our prints. What do you think about those? Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. More on that at the end of the video. Hey there. So today I want to return to that wonderful world of litigation. And I want to talk about a document that I think is very very interesting. Now, this document, it is very long, too, so we're going to have to break this into multiple videos. However, I want to say this right off the bat. This includes Vic Mignogna's deposition, which is very, very interesting, and also Nick Ricada being put in the crosshairs. Now, the deposition portion, it's interesting because of the way that it comes across. You see certain things that are brought up as highlights that you expect. The GoFundMe, did you know about it? How is it being utilized? What did your fan groups call you? Did you know that you're a unicorn? Yes, yeah, stuff like that. I'm not kidding. Did you know that you're a unicorn? Also, in this, you have something else. You have Nick Ricada being brought in. And I think that this, while something that you could foresee coming, it has to come as a shock when you're the guy in the crosshairs. Why? Because you wanted to do a good deed for a stranger. You wanted to see due process done and a life not burned down. And for it, well, look how you get mentioned. So the introduction of this. Plaintiff is suing, moving defendant for defamation and other torts related to statements about his assault of Real, amongst others. Moving defendants request a 1.5 hour deposition of Nick Ricada, the architect of a GoFundMe war chest. GoFundMe war chest. Created specifically to sue plaintiff's enemies who would Allegedly defamed him. Man, you know that wording right there. Go fund me, war chest. It definitely, I don't know, it sounds metal. Not only that, but when I listen to that, it reminds me of the lyrics. I like my coffee black, just like my metal. Oh yeah, I like that indeed. So in February 2019, Ricada, allegedly a total stranger to plaintiff, set up the GoFundMe war chest and cryptically, cryptically, described a potential list of enemies targeted for litigation. Conveniently, plaintiff destroyed his text communications with Ricada, leaving Ricada as the sole holder of their combined enemies list. I like how this comes together. People go out and they defame you, saying they want to ruin your life. You say, hey, I need some kind of recompense. Ooh, you made an enemy list. Guy sets up something, talks about being able to defend yourself, and also in that, you say, okay, after the fact, hey, you know, I delete my texts. No, you don't delete them. You destroyed evidence. <laughs> but continuing, Ricada's testimony and documents are relevant to defendant's forthcoming anti-slap motion because Ricada is in sole possession of documents and communications destroyed by plaintiff. Ricada can testify to his motives in creating the GoFundMe war chest. And Ricada can testify whether moving defendants were on the list of enemies before before or after, multiple online magazines reported on plaintiff's history of misconduct. Plaintiff and Ricada now intend to hide behind Funimation's MTD to prevent moving defendants from pursuing this minimal amount of discovery. It is an open question under the TCPA whether a client even has a TCPA shield in these circumstances. First, the court should determine whether the TCPA stay applies under these unique circumstances. Second, if the stay applies, moving defendants request leave for the discovery to occur. So, we go in, you see the uh, note about the GoFundMe uh, war chest. It uh, is extraordinary in that it appears to be the first of its kind. Ricada created a campaign for plaintiff, not for plaintiff's defense, but to sue his accusers in civil court. It is apparently their confused counterpoint to the clock has now run out on assault harassment, and inequality in the workplace. It's time to do something about it. So, you know, oh my goodness. Now, what they want to bring up over and over again is the fact that we're waxing poetic about semantics. They talk about a defense fund, but oh my God, he's on the attack. 
therefore. Then we get a timeline here. February the 19th, Ricada created a GoFundMe war chest. Then, you know, we have at the same time, Ty Beard, he's uh, being hired at the direct suggestion of Ricada. Uh, April 18th, you're talking about a month later, plaintiff deployed GoFundMe war chest and sued Riel. Toy Monica and Funimation LLC for defamation, tortious interference while existing, and prospective contracts and conspiracy for speaking out about plaintiff. For example, and they throw out an example here talking about Ronald tweeting over a hundred women and made accusations of assault, and that the allegations against Vic were corroborated, and that there were mountains of testimony. And that Funimation had proof. That's why they fired him. Monica also tweeted on February 6th that it happened to me. And that I'm only one in a sea of many. He's hurt enough people. He's a sick man that needs help. Later that day, Jamie attempted to rebuff those questioning the veracity of Monica's post on Twitter. So you see the way that's set up there. On the 5th, January 18th, court entered an order extending the moving defendant's deadline to file a TC. CPA motion until July 19th. 6. June 26, the moving defendants deposed Vic and confirmed three critical facts. 1. Or A. Ricada is not plaintiff's attorney, and accordingly, there is no protected attorney-client relationship. B. 2. The plaintiff destroyed his text communications with Ricada, amongst others. And 3. Or C. Plaintiff has not incurred legal fees through this lawsuit, meaning he suffers no economic harm from a one point five-hour deposition. Plaintiff deposed Toye and uh, Riel on the 27th and the 28th, respectively. On July 1st, uh, Funimation filed its MTD. On the 2nd, moving defendants requested Mr. Beard uh, for a 1.5-hour deposition of Ricada. Mr. Beard refuses. Then we have the file here. And Funimation is set MTD, MTD uh, for hearing on August the 8th. Now, some of this will get funny as we go forward. Some of it as we move down. So, we have our factual background. Plaintiff has a 22-year history as an actor. He has a lot of followers. They basically talk about his celebrity. On January 16th, plaintiff's long history of alleged harassment, P to the E to the D to the O, and the this as well. Sorry, I don't say those words, but well, you think about the platform erupt online causing a firestorm of criticism. One of Vic's most popular characters is Broly from the Dragon Ball Z series of Pet at um, at. 13 on January 16th, 2019, a new Dragon Ball movie comes out. They talk about how much money it makes. The same day as that, they talk about Han Leia coming out and saying quite a few things. Now, what's interesting is they don't follow up the Han Leia stuff. How Han Leia says, hey, I didn't actually know about any of that firsthand, and I didn't actually know all of this stuff with these people. They misled me. That's some interesting stuff stuff too that well I'm hoping that everybody's looked at uh, this um, is not surprising as plaintiff admits to receiving criticism for years for kissing young girls uh, you like the way that that's put together and acknowledges rumors of following him well prior to January 2019 the attention from the movie along with the ensuing firestorm online in turn launched a series of online articles recounting excruciating detail long history History of plaintiff's poor reputation. Huh. So do they throw in here the other things that came up? Plaintiff concedes the foregoing article that allegedly uh, defamatory and damaged his reputation. The defamatory articles and Twitter uh, firestorm take their toll, so he's fired here. Huh. So going out and having one of your clients say, I put this information out there because otherwise he might actually walk away. Yeah. That stuff, that didn't hurt anybody at all. Then we have Ricada thrown in here. Ricada, mm, a complete stranger, interjects himself into controversy, raises over $200,000 for legal defense. Ricada is a Minnesota resident who manages a channel on YouTube called Ricada Law. Ricada describes himself as a lawyer who law explains legal topics to the internet, fueled by whiskey and rage. On February the 11th, Ricada started live streaming about the allegations against plaintiffs. 
If you look at all of the stuff there, that is not unusual. That would be something he would talk about. Sometime in February 2019, out of the blue, Ricada contacted plaintiff directly to express his support for Vic's plight. The exact genesis of the relationship between plaintiff and his new fan, Ricada, is unknown because plaintiff has a pattern and practice of deleting relevant communica- text communications. You like the way that that sets up. Deleting relevant text communications. Despite having no apparent basis to attack the veracity of numerous uh, articles uh, written about plaintiff, Ricada set up a GoFundMe war chest on February 19, 2019 for the stated purpose of funding lawsuits against many de- possible defendants, including bloggers, corporations, and pseudo-anonymous keyboard warriors. You like this. This is where we get into the legalese of it. The fund is set up for v- Vic legal defense. There are many possible defendants in different jurisdictions from boring bloggers to multi-million, even multi-billion dollar corporations. It takes an agile and experienced a read not cheap legal team to coordinate this kind of strategy. Now he throws this in. He talks about not representing him and it's time to fight back there. Then this goes on. Confirming his knowledge of many possible defendants. Ricada also states people Vic has worked with and considered friends for many years had defamed him. Only plaintiff could have revealed this information to Ricada. Hmm, could he now? Could he have been the only person that revealed that considering it's February and we already know about defamation that is transpiring on multiple platforms where people are taking shots at this guy? Hmm, but of course somebody else would have had to reveal that, you know, because everyone else out here is stupid. So plaintiff contradicts his public statement with 113,000 Twitter followers denying approval of the GoFundMe war chest. So you can see the two different statements. This becomes a point that they spend a lot of time talking about within deposition. I approved his kind offer and so grateful. So they talk about that there. You see, this is the tweak. And here he says, hey, I didn't set that up, but I was definitely, definitely thankful for the way that that came together. Oddly, plaintiff claims he has no clue how he raised, how uh, almost $200,000 was raised through the GoFundMe war chest, how that's being spent. He, uh, he notes that he's not played a lot of attention to it. You know, for myself, I don't know if I'd want to stare at that at all because it would remind me of the horror of it. Contrary to Ricada's promotion of it, the money is not being spent to sue many possible defendants. Ricada allegedly knows it's not being spent for legal defenses, not being spent to sue bloggers, not being spent to sue pseudo-anonymous keyboard warriors. You like how, again, we're going to wax poetic because this this is pretty much the legal system. We're going to split hairs and you know, again, we're going to wax poetic. Nor is the GoFundMe war chest being spent to sue the authors of the defamatory articles. Rather, the GoFundMe war chest is being used as a battering ram against three people with the audacity to speak out against Mr. Mignogna and Funimation who terminated their independent contractor relationship after all but one of the defamatory articles were released. Basically, hey, it's not our fault that we kowtow to a pressure out there of a mob, and it's not our fault that we went out We dumped information out here saying, of course, we had the express intent of making sure that he quote-unquote pays because otherwise it would be swept under the rug. No, that's not what we would do at all. If the court gives any credence to the plaintiff's sworn testimony, Ricada created the GoFundMe war chest and identified numerous targets for litigation, all without plaintiff's approval, only to notify him after starting the campaign. Accordingly, in order to learn about Ricada's Enemy list, enemy list, <laughs> and who was defaming plaintiff? They want to depose him. Now, <laughs> this stuff, it, it gets very interesting as we move forward with it because there's certain parts in there where they talk about how uh, Ricada, yeah, he says he's not going to be down with it, how he's going to fight all of that, and well, you know, how he doesn't want to be part of that. I mean, would you want to be part of somebody's litigation? Would you want to go out and say, yeah, 
I'm going to sit down and be cool with it. In fact, this is the part that I thought was funny, and you should go back and fill in the gaps if you want to. But Ricada's uh, recent live stream evidences this concern about him not, you know, basically going in and working with that. The July 3rd stream focused on moving defendants' request for Ricada's deposition, and uh, plaintiffs hastily fired MTQ. During the uh, July 3rd stream, Ricada, you like those words too there, hastily, referenced Mr., I'm going to call him Lemonade, because I don't know how to talk about that, as a smug piece of trash, announced that he was already unavailable for deposition on August 2nd, because, hey, he's got an army of kids, and yeah, the guy is raising an army there, stated he would openly oppose his deposition, self-declared any information he might have is irrelevant, directed Mr. Lemonade to earn it be in response to obtaining his deposition, noted that he had no interest in complying because all of you, presuming to be Mr. Lemonade and co-counsel, are scum, and he noted that he would make Mr. Lemonade earn the right to his deposition. Now, sometimes do you think you've woken up in the twilight zone? Because for me, yeah. I think that I have. I definitely think that I have. Now, when this is set together, too, I like the way that this is uh, presented because they make it sound like he is not working within the confines of the Minnesota Rules of Professional Conduct, which he says in that live stream he is more than willing to comply with. He is going to go by the rule of law. But, of course, cherry-picking, that's the way to go. That's the way to play because, of course, yeah, that's the way that we're going to roll forward. Now, the rest of this, as I say, it's a 188-page document, but you're talking about 280 pages of uh, deposition. You're also talking about articles associated with this and on. So this is something that we'll have to conclude in another video. When you're looking at this, though, like I said, that beginning, it's actually pretty interesting. All of this stuff, wow, it definitely says something, but you let me know what you think of that. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you're subbed, make sure you hit that bell, and check out the links in the description. Patreon, PayPal, and this, the case of the littlest umbrella. All ages love crafty and tell, plus another book, definitely two of them on one tier. You should check that out. Also, for a limited time, we've set up an Etsy shop so you can get prints and artist cards. Definitely pick up this stuff because when it's gone, well, we're not going to do that again. Also, let me know what you think about all of this stuff. I mean, when we're talking about Put and put in the crosshairs for trying to go out and salvage someone's reputation, making sure they're not burned down. How would you take this? I mean, when you see that scorched earth, maybe you're not surprised, but imagine yourself in the middle of it. It's absolutely insane. Leave your comments, pro and con, and, well, ending this, I want to say that I appreciate you. These people, they forget your face. They forget exactly how you are associated with endeavors. Me, I don't want to be like that, so I appreciate you. I thank you for showing up, and, well, we'll be doing this stuff again soon. Thank you.